This is The Culture Corner with Bonnie Gilgallen on iHub Radio. Call 760-544-TALK. That's 760-544-8255. Now here's Bonnie G. Music Sunday continues with Ken Green. It's Ken, not Kenny. Mom, Mom used to call you Kenny, but now it's Ken, right? Absolutely. And um, so, uh, you've been you've been in the Palm Springs area a while now, right? Yeah, since uh, professionally singing since the early 2000s. Okay. Yeah. And so you pl- sing and play guitar? Sing and play guitar. Now, do you ever do uh, original stuff, or is it all covers? Oh, well, it's really all covers. I okay. write... Uh, like most people do, and yeah. back in the 60s, uh, I was in a group, and we wrote, and we you know, we were going to do everything. Mm-hmm. We were going to be the Beatles. and Yeah. But um, nowadays, people don't come to see me to hear me, or, or to hear my music. They, they want to hear the things they know. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, in a show, I often say, and <clears throat> if I'm doing a concert, you know, that I'll sneak in one of my songs, and I'll say, you know, listen, it's my show. I do what I want. That's right. Whether Darn you want to hear it or not, <laughs> you're going you're to hear, hear this one. And you're going to like it. <laughs> right. yeah. So I can sneak them in every now and then. But the, what I do is um, is try to find music that's uh, not only um, familiar to the people, but also that have stories behind them. And uh, the people come to my shows because they, they enjoy the backstories of the songs. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of, well, to call it research is a little over the top, but I've, I do a lot of... Uh, Looking at, uh, reading about why a song was written, who wrote it. Uh, research is okay. I think we can use that yeah. word. Well, yeah. it's kind of. It's it like not academic. scientific, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> so, uh, besides my absolutely mellifluous voice and amazing guitar work, <laughs> which is obviously why they would come to see me, they enjoy that. They mm-hmm. enjoy the the idea of, and, and also as a performer, when I can tell them something interesting about a song. I'm not being a teacher or, you know, a, a musicologist or anything, but I'm just telling them something interesting about a song. Mm-hmm. I find that they listen to the song. Of course. And one of the biggest gripes I have is that nobody ever listens to lyrics anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. th- these are amazing li- wordsmiths uh, from past, uh, yes. uh, you know, uh, Yip Harburg, f- who many people he wrote don't somewhere know. Uh, somewhere over the rainbow over didn't the rainbow? he the words yeah that's a fabulous story yeah there's a good example yeah. of a great story which yeah. if you like i could tell you yeah but, absolutely tell uh, us <laughs> okay we want to hear that all, all right well i'll try to uh, pare it down a little okay. bit the, over the rainbow obviously was written for the movie right and it was intended to move the story along, along and so yes forth. so there's no question about why harold arlen and yip mm-hmm. harburg wrote it and yip harburg both harold arlen and yip harburg were Russian sons of Russian Jewish escapees from Tsarist Russia. Okay. So when they wrote the song Over the Rainbow, if you remember the story in the movie, she's mad at Anne M mm-hmm. and uh, she wants to go someplace, someplace where people that, are nice. Right, and then yeah. she, nobody's going to yell at her mm-hmm. or make her do the chores or whatever. But in the back of their minds, they had, a, they had another thing going, very Americana. As they wrote that song, they in the front of their minds, were thinking of their fathers Mm -hmm. who knew when they were in Russia. There had to be something better. There had to be something, some place they could go, Mm -hmm. some place where they could realize their dreams. Dreams, yeah. So I've been singing that song now in my own version Mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. And it stopped being just a wonderful song that moved Judy Garland's career along. Mm -hmm. It became a real... American, if you will, story. Mm-hmm. We're doing this during the July 4th. The American dream. This was Absolutely. the American dream, yeah. There's got to be a place somewhere that's better than here. We can be happy and free and that's not right. have be oppressed. So yeah. I hope uh, the listeners, who's, uh, people listening now, when they hear that song, l- think about it in terms of mm-hmm. beyond just a very ni- well, a very nice song. It was re- I think it was voted the greatest song of the 20th century. Wow. But yeah, I think you're right. I think when people, when the, I hear little stories like that and little mm-hmm. tr- trivia and tidbits about a song, it's like, oh, I didn't know that. You do. You listen to the song from a different perspective. Absolutely. People love that. I mean, rather yeah. than just, okay, we're going to go hear somebody sing. And it's just like when Dr. Jessica was asked her what makes a performance special, somebody's got to move me. It's got to do something for me, not just sit up there and sing pretty. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I 
who was uh, out in your lobby listening to the last mm-hmm. interview. Mm-hmm. And fascinating people. Yeah. What a story she's got. Yeah, yeah. But the idea of connecting with the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, if I do nothing else well, or if I do nothing else on purpose, let me put it that way, it's connecting to the, with the audience. Yeah, got you. Uh, I'm there. I want you to listen to me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make this interesting for you. Mm-hmm. That's my point of view, and hopefully, hopefully, that <laughs> that comes through. And I also like to think of it as um, I, I, I teach voiceovers, and we talk about audiobooks and that kind of thing. One of the things we talk about is taking the listener on a journey, mm-hmm. taking them. They want to escape, taking them somewhere else, even if it's for two minutes, three minutes, whatever, out of their day to day lives. And that's part. Of, that's what. Again, connecting with the audience as a performer and telling those kind of stories. Mm-hmm. Wow, taking, getting your mind somewhere else than the taxes, the kids, the fight you had with your neighbor, whatever it is. Without, without a doubt. Why do we go to a movie? Why yeah. do, why do, we why go, do you read books? Why do you do right. any of that? And yeah. you, you could say it's escapism and so forth, but it's the human condition. Absolutely. We want, we want to be entertained. We, we want to be taken away at least for a while. Well, yeah. And music. is getting, one of the best ways back to, to do that. It. Yeah. Music is, well, for me, is the only way it's mm-hmm. it's saved my sanity mm-hmm. it's uh, been uh, the center line of my life my so let's life. speaking of that let's go back did you start singing as a kid playing how did you get started in music i uh i think about that uh, when i think about that i think i've always been a musician even when i wasn't uh as a kid and you may remember this i think i mentioned this to you once before i was in my bedroom conducting uh, orchestras because there was something about music that wow. made me just want to be a part of it. I, I had no idea <laughs> what, what you I was were doing, doing but, uh, but I was a little boy just conducting the orchestra. Mm-hmm. Uh, music spoke to me from the beginning. My mom and dad uh, gave me uh, the opportunity to have guitar, uh, not guitar, uh, piano lessons mm-hmm. for a few years, so I began to understand what music was. Yeah. And then uh, very quickly, we had. I went off to college, and much to the chagrin of my father, uh, became a a guitarist Mm -hmm. in college and uh, was told at one point, I I only recently start telling the story because my my sons, who are now close to 50 years Mm -hmm. old, it's not going to damage them psychically, but I was thrown <laughs> out of it. I was thrown out of college because they said, "Well, you know what? You're probably more interested in something else than this." Mm-hmm. So, but I w- mm. just for so kids can know, I did go back. I got a okay. degree and all okay. that. But, but, um, but s- the very interesting thing happened to me in college. And I'll do it real briefly. I was mm-hmm. beginning to play the guitar. A friend of mine introduced me to a man named Travis Edmondson. Uh, Bud and Travis were huge. They were a big, big act, Hollywood Bowl, international mm-hmm. tours. He was a friend of my friend, and he sat down next to me and said, you're good. And I wasn't, I don't think. Well, why do you think he said that if you didn't because think Because he, he knew, I think he knew there I There was could something be. there, yeah. And I told him later, just before he died, uh, you don't know what you did. That, that meant so much, yeah. It changed my life. Mm-hmm. You can, he didn't say you're good. He said you can be, be good. good. Wow. And my life changed instantly. Instantly. Yeah, yeah. Now, I went off and did other things. Uh, you know, unfortunately, but that stayed did, in the back of your mind, yeah. Right, I didn't become a huge star like I was convinced I was going to be. <laughs> but uh, music, st- as I said, is the center line of my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, because of him, I believe that I could do it. That is, oh. I, that is so important. I love hearing those stories because, and people don't realize that, whether it's a parent, a teacher, a friend, whatever, and the reverse is also true. Saying something really oh, abs- negative and can cr- just crush uh, somebody's spirit, the kids, the performers, and have them just quit something that they might have been great at. That's just that little word of encouragement is so important. And it's so easy to do if yeah. you mean it. If you, you mean it, you yeah. Don't want it, you can't do it if you're phony. No, right. He yeah. meant it. Yeah. And he was such a sweet guy, and I had the one of the joys of my life is at the end of his life I had an opportunity to to thank him now to, okay so um, you started you were a guitarist in college so what kind of st- did you do rock and roll did you do folk music what kind it, of stuff in, in those days it was folk music yeah uh, and I was in a, I had my own group or 
that could expand to be whatever we wanted, mm -hmm. whatever the check could mm -hmm. be. We yeah, could, we yeah. Could be that was that like Peter, Paul, and Mary, that kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah, yeah, we did that stuff, and we yeah. were very big uh, into uh, the protest movement mm -hmm. and the, the mm -hmm. Vietnam War. Bob and Dylan, that. did you join that? Yeah. We were going to change the world. world yeah. Uh, and then uh, as time went on, folk became folk rock, mm -hmm. which became this rock is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, hey, yeah. something new here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And the girls really like that. So that was a big plus. Yeah. 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 So actually, by the time that happened, I was married. Mm -hmm. But um, so right now, uh, to bring it m up to date, the r because of that, because of the musical evolution of the 60s into the 70s and my personal evolution, I sing everything now. Mm -hmm. I, it. If the song is a good song, it doesn't I don't matter what the genre, what the genre is. Genre yep. is. Mm -hmm. Right? Give me a good song, and uh, and then to just top it off because I'm of a certain age now at a point in my career where I, certain things I don't care about anymore. Mm -hmm. um, if I like the song, it's in the show. Right. Right. And uh, hopefully you'll like it as well. Mm -hmm. That may sound a little flip but no uh, well no uh, but i think that's important i mean uh, and i i think a lot of the point and you never know why but there's certain for instance uh, there's a song i mean i get a kick out of you it's a great i don't like singing that so i don't sing it i mean good. it's just one, one of those songs it doesn't move me absolutely particularly to sing it so why do that you know and there are songs there's a song i'm sometimes asked what's your favorite song which is like you know who's your, your favorite, favorite quarterback right yeah whatever. it's hard to do yeah so but when pressed, and then usually it's a love song. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just a sucker for love yeah, songs. Yeah. The sappier, the better. Yeah. I just love love songs. And I'm asked, uh, what's your favorite love song? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who can pick? <laughs> That's tough. But yeah. I do pick one, this kind of obscure song called For Your Love by Ed Townsend. That is the most gorgeous, simple song that will break your heart if sung mm -hmm. properly. Mm-hmm. That's in every, not every show, but it's in, in most shows. And why is it? Because I do it well. Yeah. Because I love that and song. And it means something to you. <laughs> and that's going to translate. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Now, so, okay. So when, wh when did you come to Palm Springs and did you find work right away? Well, yeah, I came to Palm Springs uh, after my mom and dad got sick and died and mm -hmm. uh, moved here. I'd always, uh, they had lived here for a long time. So this mm -hmm. was kind of like a second home. And, uh, I was playing a, a, around, but not seriously. And then mm -hmm. I got remarried, and my, my wife said, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. This is you, and you've got to do it. Good. Well, nice, the smart wife. Who, yeah. <laughs> In more ways than Very supportive. Than That's know. great. That's important. So uh, I began to get gigs. And in those days, I wanted to, I wanted to work clubs. I wanted mm -hmm. to work. I wanted to work yeah. all the time. It's not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the Thursday... I'm not good for Thursday through Sunday anymore. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I guess it comes to a point where, um, yeah, that gets a little, you want to have a life and you want to relax. I mean, we, when it becomes a job, mm -hmm. then it's different. So yeah. I'm doing lots of private gigs. Okay. Uh, country clubs. Uh, I love private parties. You mm -hmm. can, from the way I describe what I do, you can imagine a private party for me is, really is just terrific. Really works great, yeah. I schmooze and we have a, we have a great time. Yeah. So if you're out there and want to have a private party and a little different. Ken Green, how, how do guy. they get a hold of you real quick? They can call, well, they can get me on my website, Ken Green hyphen headslapmusic.com. Okay. Facebook page, guess what? Ken Green Headslap Music. Mm. They can get me at 760-832-3815. So there's lots of ways of getting a hold of me. What was that phone number one more time? 760-832-3815. Okay. Uh, how did you come up with Headslop Music? It, um, it came out of conversation. People like you ask me, what do you do? And uh, the answer is everything. So I said, well, I do music that when people hear it, they go, oh. oh I remember I know that, that song. They slap their head. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay, uh, we'll be back with more from, with Ken Green on the Culture Corner in just a bit. Local talk that's moving the needle. Art exhibitions to modernism, music festivals to live theater. If it's happening in the Coachella Valley, it's on the Culture Corner with Bonnie G. I am your host, Bonnie G, on the Culture Corner. I want to get this in. I try to do this from time to time, have some thoughts for the day. And th one of these, it's very uh, apropos of the gentleman that said something nice to you. Here's this uh, thought. 
Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, or the smallest act of caring and compliments, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Mm -hmm. Leo Biscaglia. Was that a great? Oh, really? One more. No one has ever become poor by giving. And that was Anne Frank. So in this day and age, we need a lot more of all of that. My goodness. Without without getting too maudlin about it, 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 I end every show every show with three songs one is um strangest dream i don't know that last night i had the strangest dream oh okay was uh, that uh, simon and garfunkel well they did they it. did it Every, everybody did okay it, it was a, it's right. a korean war okay i know that song. from them yeah okay then uh, uh what a wonderful world of uh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. and at the end just for the fun of it i always end with good night uh good night sweetheart yeah, which yeah. is a good way of saying goodbye to people right exactly and at the end of it i say uh, in, I break the song just before the ending and I say I want you to be happy mm-hmm. I want you to be healthy I want you to be kind to each other mm-hmm. and be here the next time I'm singing yeah there you go <laughs> I love that be I happy that. be healthy be kind yeah and be here and it's so important I mean again there's uh, I'm, this is not a political show there are pol- other political shows on the radio right but we really need that these days we really really need that uh, let me ask you the same question i asked <clears throat> jessica um when you go here see other people what makes a performer or performance special for you energy okay if they obviously now i'm not talking about jumping around on the stage no, no but just you know you there feel it psychic yeah. or yes. a, a musical energy, energy field yeah mm-hmm. they believe every word they're saying mm-hmm they believe the music they're performing. Yeah. Uh, again, it doesn't matter the genre. Right. Uh, um, if it moves you, it moves you. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I would just say energy. And then, obviously, from a musical point of view, the, the professionalism, the, the ability to make the music that's, that's um, and, and they do it well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, I spend a lot of time trying to do my music as well as I can, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I appreciate professionalism. And I think also w- one thing <clears throat> that I've noticed that I've always thought is important, I'm an actress as well, is mm-hmm. is to be you, to be who you are, to know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and be the best you that you can be. Don't try to be somebody else. That's right. Yeah. That's, uh, I heard you ask the uh, Jessica, mm-hmm. if she gets nervous, mm-hmm. and to be honest, I don't, uh-huh. because my show has developed into me. Yeah. So it, you got it down. You got it down. Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 if I'm doing a new song or a new arrangement or something, I'm, I'm kind of. That's. Well, yeah. I hope that is works. it going to go well? Yeah. But the show itself, mm-hmm. if you like me, you're going to love my show, mm-hmm. and and uh, so it's not a. I don't get on stage and become something different. Yeah. I become, I'll tell you what I do become. More of who you are. 35 years old is what I become. Okay. I okay. am, I just, I cannot believe how ener- how filled with energy I get yeah. when I'm performing. Yeah. And then I, you know, kind of hobble off the stage. My knee hurts, my hip hurts, or whatever exactly. it is. But while I'm doing it, I am 30 years old. I think it reminds <laughs> me of, I think it was maybe Arthur Rubinstein, I think it maybe was a, uh, a guest on 60 Minutes years ago, and I think mm-hmm. it was him. Somebody said, you know, that he was hobbling along, but when he sat down at the piano, boom, absolutely. it just became, yeah, you know, 30 years went away, 40 years, yeah. Absolutely, and that's absolutely yeah. for sure. And I think the other thing is about uh, performers, I think um, you don't always have to be Robert Goulet or, you know, Ethel Murray, whatever, to have mm-hmm. that kind of, it's, it's, how you make people feel it's the presentation that wow i love so and so and they may not have the technically the best voice in the world Mm -hmm. but that's okay yeah and i you know i jokingly was talking about my wonderful voice my phenomenal guitar work Mm -hmm. well i got a pretty good voice yeah and i play guitar pretty well yeah but there's a whole lot of people who are better at either one of those those than me but um people seem to enjoy what i do because of that if if i was bad at those things they wouldn't want right that would be a problem yeah yeah (laughs) But um, they enjoy the presentation. They enjoy the the feeling that that I am looking at them. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm tutoring a, a young performer now, and I, I keep telling her, make a connection. Mm-hmm. Even if nobody's looking at you, you look at them. Find somebody. 
find somebody to, to hook into, to, and then others will see you doing that, yeah. and they'll they'll come along. That's great. That brings up a question that I've asked one or two other um, singers that we've talked to here, um, and I think I know the answer already. How do you feel about, there's some controversy about singers who even occasionally, not all the time, close their eyes when they're performing? How do you feel about that? I think it can be effective in the moment. In the moment, yeah. Uh, certainly not for any long Constantly. period. Constantly. I mean, there are times that I do get, I just feel... And I, I know I, I close my eyes because I feel it, but certainly not. It, it, it's tantamount to turning your back on the Because audience. then you close the audience out if you yeah. do it for a long period of time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it can be effective. They can see that you're very, Emotional. you are being moved, and right. so they're being moved. Right. I get really upset with the back to the audience. Yeah. How dare you? Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. How no. dare you? Yeah. <laughs> they paid money to see exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> so you got it. you can't hide. I mean, it's, but for some, I think for some performers, it's, A, it's perceived as you're shutting the audience out. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it's a, it's a nerve, it's a nerve, nervous thing for the, uh, the mm -hmm. singer. I, okay, if I close my eyes, then I don't have to be, uh, and that's, um, but you're, whatever it is, you're putting up a barrier, and yeah. it makes the audience uncomfortable if you do it for an extended period of time. I think. Yeah. I, I'm so happy that s people will come out and see me. You want to see them? I want... You're mine for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not leaving you. Now close what, the doors. You know? <laughs> um, so where can... If people wanted to come see you anytime soon, anything we can tell them? Well, as I told you, I, my steady gigs are in retirement areas and... Uh, private parties mm -hmm. and uh, country clubs, which are generally speaking private. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more than welcome to come to a place like Atria where, mm -hmm. I, where I perform a Mirage Inn. Mm -hmm. They would love it if yeah. you'd come and see yeah. it. And I would love it too, but uh, it may not be the place you want to go. Yeah. I've just been booked, uh, this is a little bit uh, in the future, but in January, back I'll- Back at the library. Back at the Sunday Sounds for Palm, uh, Palm Desert Library, mm -hmm. and I'm anxious to do that again. It's a great show. Yeah, Jiggs Gallagher does a great, he put does. together a great program. There was some, Anybody uh, named Jiggs is okay in yeah. my book. I had the honor <laughs> of doing it uh, last January, and uh, Eric, uh, my sweetie, also yep. did it. Well, Ken Green, uh, fascinating. So glad to get to know you a little bit better in your history. And uh, My uh, pleasure. Head, Thank you. Head Slap Music. Ken Green, headslapmusic.com. Make sure it's your own head. Yeah, that's, that's don't important. be slapping anybody else's Nobody's head. Nobody's head. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, all right. Thank you so much to Jessica Taylor, Barry Martin, Ken Green, We'll see you next week on The Culture Corner. Mm -hmm.